We don't have any sound of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's private meeting Wednesday with 30 Jewish community leaders in Toronto to start off today's episode with, unfortunately, because the meeting was off the record and was closed to the public. The PMO says there is no transcript being released of what was said and no recording either. The meeting is significant, though, because it was the first of its kind since October 7th with such a large group who had the Prime Minister's ear for an entire hour. Many Canadian Jewish leaders feel disappointed in Canada's recent stance on Israel since the Hamas attack on Israel and the Jewish state's subsequent declaration of war. They say it's changed in the past three months from unwavering support to, in November, Trudeau asking Israel's prime minister to act with maximum restraint in Gaza. And then in December, Canada's UN vote calling for a ceasefire, which has been seen by many as a betrayal of Canada's long-standing relationship with Israel. Wednesday's meeting also came on the eve of an international court of justice trial in The Hague, where Israel is being accused by South Africa of genocide against the Palestinians. Canada hasn't yet issued a position on this, despite two prominent Canadian legal scholars describing the whole hearing as absurd. I can say that very few of us were went up to there and said, yay, let's take a selfie. Like, no, none of us felt better walking out than we did walking in. And we still pretty feel uncomfortable. We just heard words. We did not hear actions. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Thursday, January the 11th, 2024. Welcome to the CJN Daily, a podcast of the Canadian Jewish News, sponsored by Metropia. Although the Prime Minister's office official itinerary did show he was holding a meeting with local Jewish community members at a synagogue Wednesday in Toronto, they didn't publish the location or even the time on purpose for security reasons, and everyone who attended was sworn to secrecy too. Indeed, the only reason we learned it had happened and where was because later in the afternoon, long after Trudeau had left the building to meet with Toronto's chief of police, the Prime Minister himself posted photos of him shaking hands with a rabbi and hugging other Jewish leaders at Beth Tzedek Synagogue, where, according to reports, he also spent an hour sitting down for a frank fireside chat and a question-and-answer session led by Rabbi Stephen Wernick in the Daily Chapel. So what happened? Rabbi Wernick says he recited a traditional blessing for the head of government and even joked about that movie The Fiddler on the Roof scene where they have a special blessing for the czar to keep the czar far away from them. But then things got serious. Wernick told me they asked the prime minister to do more about the spike of anti-Semitism, including the blockade every weekend of a Jewish neighborhood at Avenue Road and the 401. And they criticized what Werner called Canada's, quote, absurd silence on the genocide question, because he says not saying anything when Israel is accused of genocide will lead to violence against Jews or worse here on Canadian streets. Now, Wernick was traveling last night, so I only spoke to him by phone, but he and his colleague, Rabbi Robin Fryer Bodzin, did meet with Trudeau alone for 15 minutes before the general session. Rabbi Fryer Bodzin joins me now from Toronto. So uh, are you allowed to discuss what happened, um, how this all happened? Yeah, um, it was an off-the-record conversation. Rabbi Wernick and myself have been working on creating relationships with pro-Israel MPs in the liberal government. And so a few things happened behind the scenes that I can't share. Um, and a meeting was set up with about 30 community members, a number of elected officials who are tremendous friends to the Jewish community, not all Jewish themselves. Um, The first meeting that took place was myself and Rabbi Wernick and the prime minister. Um, We spoke about our dissatisfaction. We spoke about the feeling of abandonment. We spoke about hearing of people wanting to take off mezuzahs. We spoke about having even our people living by Avenue Road and 401, how that's impacting their lives. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people in that community banded together and they have their own extra personal security going around the neighborhood now that they're paying for out of their own pockets. Uh, and, you know, we spoke about what's going to happen at um, at the ICJ. Uh, he spoke positively. I'm just going to about- say for our listeners, the International Court of Justice, which is meeting Thursday and Friday in The Hague, because South Africa took Israel to the court 
complaining that Israel was doing genocide. We spoke about the hostages, and we also spoke about uh, retired Justice Rosalia Bella's fantastic piece uh, in the newspaper. She's a member of our community as well, and he also believed that it was fantastic. Uh, that was about 15 minutes. And then there was the larger meeting. There was uh, questions from Rabbi Wernick and that the prime minister answered. And then there were questions from the floor that were about the hostages, were about anti-Semitism, were about Hamas, were about ceasefire, were about When you more... say ceasefire, you mean that the government's called for a ceasefire, which is something that the Jewish community is opposed to, yeah. A lot uh, of the Jewish community is opposed to. Right. Uh, right. So again, because it was off the record, I can share what the issues were that we discussed. His understanding of the day that Canada voted for ceasefire on the UN was a whole lot different than most of the people in the room. Some of you might recall that earlier in the day, there was a long statement put out by Canada and uh, Australia and New Zealand. He explained it. Um, Ellen, you can maybe explain this better for your listeners, that that was basically the Rashi to the UN vote, um, that that was basically really? like. So the commentary, all the rest is in the Rashi, which is all the rest is in the details. Right. Mm -hmm. hmm. Do we know what Canada's position is going to be on this International Court of Justice? So far, we haven't heard a word. He said that Canada will not share their own words, but will write something together with G7 with the rest of the G7 leaders. I personally find that dissatisfactory. Mm -hmm. Never assume, but there were others in the room who found that to be dissatisfactory as well. Did he talk about UNRWA? Was UNRWA brought up, Canadian funding? UNRWA was, UNRWA was brought up. And? Uh, bringing in immigrants was brought up. Gazans well, as opposed to Israelis, yeah. His response both to us in the smaller meeting and in the larger meeting, one of his responses was, it's not just... Palestinians from Gaza who are anti-Semitic, that this is a larger problem. Right. But the people who I are worried about I this going, yeah. is that they're going to allow terrorists to come in, too. That's actually newsworthy that Canada is not taking its own position on the International Court of Justice. We also commented to him that last week when he when he tweeted at 430 in the afternoon on a Friday, um, that that's not that's not making a statement. You know, today, during the day, he showed pictures that no one who was in attendance showed because, you know, today he showed it right away um, of our meetings. Today, he posted right away um, on, about his meeting with Chief Demkew, who I know is a definite friend of the Jewish community. Um, but when he wants to say something of a that would have a larger impact um, that might be controversial, yeah. 4 30 on a friday afternoon is not the time to do it if it if you want the jewish community to feel that they are protected and cared about in mm -hmm. canada a multicultural country right yeah. back to the meetings so there were yes. 30 community leaders was uh there any people from the rabbinical council of toronto there were rabbis. Uh, there, there, rabbis. there were orthodox rabbis conservative rabbis reconstructionist rabbis and reform rabbis so nobody from the VUD was there and Jewish leaders, was anyone mm -hmm. yelling at him or uh, very upset? Was there any controversy? One person was very emotional when that person spoke. And that is the person that if you saw his post, that he's hugging a person, that is that person. Mm -hmm. And what was so emotional? What were they talking about? Their personal experience of anti-Semitism or being Jewish in Toronto right now. Okay. So what's next? What happens next? Your question, that is the best question. What's next is we all, the entire Jewish community needs to continue to advocate and to engage in high level advocacy on our behalf for our community here and for the state of Israel. Um, I, both Rabbi Wernick and myself believe it's important to get involved at the grassroots level and at the leadership level. And as the rabbis of that set of congregation, we know it was a privilege to hold this meeting uh, in our community, in the largest congregation. Uh, I just wished I would have spent the rest of the day on more of a high. Conservative rabbis Wernick and Friar Bodzin have met the prime minister before in Ottawa a few times. It was the first time Rabbi Daniel Korobkin had met the PM. 
Korobkin is spiritual leader of the Orthodox synagogue known as the Bayit in Thornhill. And the Prime Minister's office released a photo of the two of them shaking hands. Korobkin joins me now. So I literally was on the phone today with the Prime Minister's office saying, when can we get an interview? And they go, oh, next time he's in Toronto. And then I see his posting and I was like, really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> so I feel yeah. like I have to do catch up. Can right. you can you tell us how this all came about? Et cetera? Well, I, I, I got a call from Rabbi Stephen Warnick, and he said that this is extremely confidential um, and that we that the prime minister uh, was not sure whether uh, he wanted the public to even know that he was meeting with the Jewish community, but that he felt that it was important to meet. And this was initiated by the prime minister's office. Um, and um, Rabbi Wernick uh, was able to get representatives from Sija, from UJA, and you know from some rabbis in the community. And we sat with the prime minister in the Beit Midrash at uh, Beth Sedek this morning. What I don't feel I can share with you, I think you'd have to really speak with Rabbi Wernick and find out from him. He did tell us that the prime minister did not want to be quoted. This was everything was off the record. But what I can tell you, and I, and I, and I, um, I do so with some level of hesitation because I don't want uh, the, the, anything to be seen by the prime minister's office as being an affront or, or um, because I think that right now the Jewish community needs as many friends as we can get even if we're not always happy with the friends that we make because we wish that they would do more. But we still need to maintain friendships, especially with the, with the number one uh, person in, go in government right now, which is the prime minister. But I, I do feel that there was an air of caution and disappointment and hurt uh, coming into the meeting and I don't believe that much of that dissipated by the end of the meeting. In other words, I think that while most people, I think, appreciated the gesture, there wasn't really much of substance that resulted from it other than expressions of sympathy, understanding, and a desire to remain connected to us as the Jewish community and um, a, a a repeated refrain that Canada stands with Israel. There was a nice picture that his office released of you shaking hands with him. Yes. Yeah. No one, no one asked permission of Rabbi Karapkin for that picture. But the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, as the leader of our country, a country to which Jews uh, have to express loyalty to, you know, every single Shabbat, we say a prayer for the, the king and for the prime minister, and we ask God to grant them wisdom and the proper jurisprudence and uh, ability to lead the country. And I felt that as the prime minister of our country, to which I have tremendous gratitude, that he deserved the respect. And that, and that was the reason why I went over to him and shook his hand. And I said, thank you for engaging with us. Okay, could you say what you asked? I, I did not ask anything myself. I had planned to ask a question, but I think the prime minister was, you know, just there were too many people asking questions. I can tell you what I would have asked. I had already I had already planned, formulated the question in my mind, which is that over the last four years, and I think the CJN reported on this, uh, the Canadian government has funded UNRWA to the tune of close to $100 million and just recently uh, added another three million over the summer for its emergency campaign, and it's been actually with you know there's clear evidence that UNRWA has, uh, has colluded in the past with Hamas, continues to collude. Wherever our sol soldiers have gone, they've discovered evidence of UNRWA wrappers, insignias, on ammunition, on bombs. And the like, we know that there was a teacher for an UNRWA school that was clearly collaborating with Hamas. Uh, if I had had the opportunity to ask the prime minister a question, I would have asked him, uh, does Canada plan on continuing its support for UNRWA in light of all of this evidence? 
Unfortunately, that question was not asked at the session. Yeah, that's the question I'm hoping to ask if I ever get a chance to speak to him too. How surprised were you that this gesture was coming now on the eve of the International Court of Justice hearings and Canada's taking position on that, right? Or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure, you know, why this was timed. I yeah, what what comes across to me, and this is just my impression. It's the impression of one human being, is that everything that the prime minister does is with extreme calculus, for um, for political expediency. And so, um, I would imagine that this was no exception. Okay, this is the first time you've personally met him this since October seventh or ever. Yeah, um, I think it's the first time I've actually ever met him. Yeah, You're I wasn't. I was. I was. I, I will tell you that, um, based on what I had seen of him in the past, I was not impressed with his intellect. Um, seeing him in action, um, I was. I, I actually felt that I had not given him enough credit. Um, he he is a smart man. Um, but he's, he's also very calculated. Did anybody get heated? Um, there was one speaker who was very emotional and I think she expressed her passion appropriately. I think everyone was, you know, I'm an American, uh, originally, so I'm always scared that I'm going to be the hothead in the audience. I was very impressed by how everyone kept their composure and was extremely respectful, even when expressing disapproval. And we just have to continue supporting the state of Israel, knowing that we are in the right, knowing that we do have friends who are supportive of us. And even politicians will, who will sometimes be supportive of Israel, even at their own political expense. We have to be appreciative of those politicians and we also have to make sure that we don't cower in fear and that we step out boldly and do what's right, regardless of the consequences. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality and customer care. One more fact about the private meeting with Trudeau. He did get a gift while he was there. The synagogue gave him a pair of socks to add to his famous collection of men's hosiery. These socks depict the Zionist movement's founder, Theodore Herzl, playing hockey. The socks come from our CJN Treasure Trove contributor, David Matlow's collection. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the Canadian government's position. Write to us at ebessner at the cjn.ca. And we will be following the International Court of Justice hearings on Israel and genocide. Stay tuned for a special episode on that next week. Thanks for listening to the CJN Daily. 